But the other thing is we're going to be competitive in every single football game and give ourselves a chance to win every game in the fourth quarter. Welcome to Sports Corner, everyone. I'm Jason Castura. Since its inception in 1920, the Golden Flashes football program has been invited to only two bowl games, and they haven't even had a single victory in either. The program has only won one MAC title, and that was back in 1971, when the team boasted the likes of Jack Lambert and Nick Saban. Last year, the program introduced Daryl Hazel as the new leader. In his first season, he went 5-7, and seven, but that was just three weeks to recruit his own players. This come upcoming season is a different story. Hazel brought in 25 brand new recruits yesterday on National Signing Day. And now Eddie Kilroy has an exclusive interview with Coach Hazel about these recruits and how they're going to change the future of this program. And we are here with head coach Daryl Hazel who's going to talk to us all about the recruiting action that he's been able to pull off in this great offseason for KSU football. Coach, thank you again for joining us. Eddie's always good to be with you. Coach, let's start out. Let's take a look at uh, last season just briefly. Uh, the team did go 5-7. and A couple bumps in the road, but there was a lot of progress towards the end of the season. Just give us your thoughts on your inaugural season as the KSU head football coach. Well, we stumbled a couple times coming out of the blocks and played some good football teams with Alabama and Kansas State early in the in the season and mm -hmm. I thought midway through the season we we kind of hit our stride a little bit mm -hmm. and uh, started figuring out how to win football games and we were able to run four out of the last five games which gives you momentum going into the offseason especially going into next season well I mean that momentum is really important uh, you know and it's interesting too this particular offseason I mean you had the full season to recruit and then the entire offseason last year you only had six weeks. What's the difference between last year and this year? Well, actually, it was at only three weeks. Oh, yeah. Um, but, you know, it gives you a chance when you have a full year to evaluate and uh, identify players and then really get to know what the player is really about, uh, his family and his friends and the people in the school that, that like him or may not like him. And you, you get a better feel for who you're bringing into your program. Uh, Discuss just briefly, what was the game plan going into this particular recruiting class, having the amount of time that you could going to find the best players available? We're always going to emphasize getting the great players from Ohio, especially Northeast Ohio. And our staff is committed to doing that. There's great football here in the state of Ohio. The coaching's outstanding. So uh, we're always going to try to get 60 to 75 percent of our class from this great state. Uh, just give us three, brief, uh, just briefly, just give us three players that KSU football fans should be looking for and remembering their names come kickoff in August. Well, I think the uh, big offensive lineman from uh, Pennsylvania, Jake Waitucky, is one of the guys that's probably offensive line-wise probably the most ready. He's 6'5", mm -hmm. he's 285, moves well, is very physical. He's one of the guys I think can help us. I also like the uh, linebacker out of Michigan, Matt Dellinger, uh, very fast guy, a very mature guy, and then one of those quarterbacks, you know, they could vie for the starting, uh, starting position mm -hmm. there. Obviously, Spencer Keith was your starting quarterback. Obviously, you're going to play the best player available, but having a guy like Spencer Keith and then a talent like that to come in at the quarterback position, I mean, you got to feel pretty good about that going into the season. I feel very good about both of those guys we brought in, you know, David Fisher and um, Colin Reardon. Mm -hmm. Those guys are both competitive guys, and there's nothing like competition to make a football team better. Now, it's interesting to point out there is a lot of talent, raw talent being added to this team, but does this recruiting class help put Kent State into a situation where they can be in a bowl game this year? Well, I think... You know, as a, as a staff, our goal every year is to win the Mid-American Conference mm -hmm. and also to, uh, to be a bowl champion team. So uh, that's our goal. There's a lot of work to be done between now and then. And uh, our kids are they're working extremely hard right now in the offseason to, to put themselves in a position to have a chance to be successful. You, I mean, you've been talking for about three straight days about this recruiting class. But what have the players told you? about coming to Kent State and being part of the Golden Flashes family for this season? At the end of the day, it comes down to trust and uh, with families 
and with the player, they trusted our staff. And they trust the things that we're telling them where this program's going. So that's what it comes down to. And uh, we take a look at just, you know, this KSU football program. Obviously, one of your goals, win the Mid-American Conference. Give us just a couple more goals that KSU football is going to headhunt for and get done come this August when the Golden Flashes get ready to kick off for another great season of football. The thing is, we're going to be competitive in every single football game and give ourselves a chance to win every game in the fourth quarter. We'll see this season, the 2012 season for the KSU Golden Flashes. We're going to send it over to Jason and Sean and Nick. They're going to run the point about the new KSU recruiting class for 2012. I'm Eddie Kilroy. That's Coach Daryl Hazel. Thank you for joining us. Thanks, Eddie. It's always a pleasure to have Coach Hazel in the studio. Now I am joined by Black Squirrel Radio personality Sean Barry and Daily Kent Stater reporter Nick Shook. Boys, let's start with the first question. What does this recruiting class mean to Coach Hazel? All right, well, I'm going to start this one off. This recruiting class is a great thing for Kent State. we got 25 kids coming. Kids, we kept out of the clutches of Ohio, Temple. 25 kids. 25 kids we kept out of the clutches of Ohio, even 25. Louisville. Terrible no, 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 no. Come. We're going to start players. We're going to start players their freshman year, and they're going to make an immediate impact on this Golden Flash team. I'm telling you, mark my words. I can recruit mark you my words. to come play for Kent State, and you would sign. I couldn't play football for crap. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Just because they got 25 guys doesn't mean anything. They have to have quality players, and that's something we won't see for a couple of years down the road. Oh, man. Ah, you know, that's, that's a tough one. I agree with both of you, but don't worry. We'll be back with more on the offense and defense. Stay tuned to Sports Corner. We'll be right back after this. Welcome back to Sports Corner, and welcome back to the desk. Eddie, as we both know, one major problem for the Flashes football team last season was on the offensive side of the ball. The Flashes ranked in the bottom 15 nationally. That's total offense. We're talking passing yards, rushing yards, and total scoring last season. Coach Hazel brought in 12 new players on the offensive side of the ball, looking to help improve those numbers. Now taking a look at some of the guys, he brought in a total of 11 offensive players and some big threats hopefully. First on the list are running back Julian Durden and C.J. Brathaway. Then we look at the CJ's J receivers, excuse me, James Brook and Charles Chandler, hoping to be big playmakers for the flashes on the outside, and also huge, and I'm going to distress huge offensive lineman Jake Wittucky from Pennsylvania. Next up, two very athletic tight ends, Kyle Crum and Bryce Fackler, who both look to see the field next season. A lot of minutes for those guys. Finally, Coach Hazel's motivation for Spencer Keys. They come in two quarterbacks, Colin Reardon from just outside Youngstown, Ohio, the local, and junior college recruit David Fisher, who's flying all the way from the West Coast to catch some waves on the coast of Lake Erie and also to play for the Golden Flashes. There are three players specifically that Coach Hazel thinks can make big plays for the Flashes next year. First up, Jace, Jake Wittucky. He's a big offensive lineman from Pennsylvania. You can call him a farm boy if you like, but the kid can block. Coach Hazel raved about him earlier, saying that he will be one of the few freshmen to get legitimate minutes, and we can't wait to see him hit a couple people. I don't know, maybe some Akron Zips on the field next season. We could also definitely solve any offensive line issues the Flashes might have with his services. Next up is tailback Julian Durden. He's got the speed of former great Flash Eugene Jarvis and the vision of Speedy Terry. He was the first team All-State in Pennsylvania last year and first team All-Conference three years running. Durden is a home run hitter out of the backfield and he's also hoping to play a role in the return game for the Flashes as well. Coach Hazel had nothing but good things to say about Durden and although he may be undersized, he has the toughness to take a hit. That's if anyone can touch him. And finally, we go back to the quarterbacks. Colin Reardon led Poland to a big run in the state playoffs this year and was second team All-Ohio. David Fisher is a kid with both the arm strength and the speed to make plays inside, oh, and outside the pocket. Spencer Keith has started three years, but there's nothing guaranteeing his starting position with these two guys coming into camp this year to make an interesting spring and summer. Offensively, the Flashes are looking to do some more damage next year, and Coach Hazel hopes for all four of these guys to step up and take a big role 
for the Golden Flashes. One recoup coming this way next year is former Kenton star tight end Bryce Fackler. He'll be joining KSU this fall, not only competing for a starting position on offense, but he'll get to do it against his own family members. His older brother, Mark Fackler, currently plays defensive end for the Golden Flashes, who will be looking for a chance to bruise on his younger brother in practice next season. Here is Bryce Fackler with TV2 KSU about his commitment to the Golden Flashes. Coach Hazel and his staff really feel like they're just a great group of guys and they really care about their players. And I don't know, I just felt wanted by them. And the other schools that really recruited me, I didn't really feel like I was as wanted as Kent State wanted me. Well, my high school team, we've won a WBL championship, our league championship, uh, for, for all four years in uh, high school. So I was hoping maybe bring some championships, uh, some MAC championships back to Kent. And, even make some bowl games and win some of those. That'd be nice because I know that Kent State is capable of, you know, winning a lot, and I see that coming. Like with Coach Hayes, I see him doing a great job, and the players are really buying into what he's doing. And it just seems like we're on the edge, and I'm hoping that here in the next couple of years we can really push over that edge and <clears throat> uh, just win some championships and make it there and be. A contender there late in the year. Talked a lot of offense just then. Let's go ahead and run the point once again. Jason, my brother, go ahead and take it away. See what the guys have to say. Welcome back. Now we heard from one recruit. Let's hear from you guys. Who's the best offensive recruit? Well, you know, Jason, I have to go with a guy like Jake Watucky. 6'5, 280 pounds, three year starter for his team at Highlands High School. All conference selection, and I'll tell you what, he's a master of the pancake blocks. All right, man, all right, man. You know what? You like big guys, don't you? Well, I was a lineman myself. I love yeah, working whatever the trenches. Whatever you say, man, all right. But you did get one thing right. He's from Highlands. You know what that is? Pittsburgh, my hometown. I'll tell you who's going to make a bigger <laughs> impact. Julian Dern, the running back what? from Montour High School. Heck yeah! From Pittsburgh. He's 5'8", 170. He is a scat back all day long. He's a home run hitter. He had over 2,000 yards. He's playing against Ohio in that big 33 game. It's going to be a good day when Julian Durden gets back. running. Scat back. We already have Dre Archer in the backfield. It's be and a we good have day Trayon Durham. When Julian Durden gets we on that are, field. Trust we're, me. We're packed with running backs. He had we're, over 30 touchdowns. Over 30 touchdowns. How is he going to make touchdowns. an impact? We have three running backs already. We had a running back with just 500 yards rushing all season long. Trayon Durham. Because, Durham. because he couldn't. Our offense last year, it was one of the worst in the nation. Tell me, is it least going to get a little bit better? Well, you know, I, I have to say, Spencer Keith wasn't very good for the first five or six games of the season, but then in the second half of the season, he played really well. And you know what? They've brought in a junior college transfer at quarterback to compete with him. We'll see how it really turns out. You know, I'm going to agree with Nick. For once, we do have a lot of depth in quarterback. We have so many running backs. We got a good offensive line now. It's going to get a lot better, Jason. Trust me. All right, you heard it from our guys. We're not done here at Running the Point. We'll be back. Stay tuned to Sports Corner. Welcome back to Sports Corner once again. Kent's offense may have had some ups and downs last year, but the defensive side of the ball was a definite bright spot for the Flashes. The Flashes had four all-max selections, including the first-team sophomore, Roosevelt Knicks. They also were second in scoring defense and led the conference in total defense. Now looking at some of the new guys that are coming in, let's throw it over to Eddie. You got to check out these linebackers. I mean, they are freaky athletic. Matt Dillinger out of Michigan, Colton Kemp's, out of Maryland, and of course, Denzel Burton, the linebacker out of Glenville, Ohio. Burton plays both linebacker and defensive end for the Tar Blooders, and he'll definitely be a big factor. Also, the safety, Jordan Italiano out of Canfield, Ohio. The Italiano Staliano, as he's already gotten the nickname, is the only true safety in this recruiting class. Pretty interesting there, folks. Looking at the rest of this recruiting class, you'll see a lot of linemen and defensive backs you'll have in the trenches. Chris Fairchild, Reno Retta, Jake Kane Red and Kane Ked is expected to compete in the Leo position. That is on the defensive line side of the ball. In the back nine, we have Jason O'Brien. And then we got some guys from out of state. We got a Texas player, Carrick Roan. And from the state of Florida, Jamal Roberts and Kenan Stalls. Here are some Three big-time recruits for the Flashes this season on the defensive side of the ball. First off, Coach Hazel's first commit to this class, Jordan Italiano. Potential for great nicknames, by the way, as we already mentioned before. Italiano was a second-team All-State player out of Canfield and has a big-time safety. He's a hard-hitting player that will crowd the box and make big plays. He may not see the field. Oh, he may not see the field in his first season, but he could turn out to be one of the most important players in this Flashes draft class. Next up is Jake Kincaid. Kincaid has 
has a big body of a lineman with the athleticism of a linebacker. He can play on or off the line, three or two point stance. Kind of sounds like me, right, Eddie? The kid can do it all. Kane Cat also played in the state title game this year in Ohio and was a first team all state selection and played in the Big 33 Pennsylvania Ohio matchup. The accolades for this kid just piled up his senior year, and he has definitely earned his scholarship. Coach Hazel said that he has the potential to see the field this year also. And even if he doesn't, nothing will stop him from working hard. And finally, you have to mention the tar blooder, Denzel Burton. And if anyone from the Cleveland area is aware, we know a thing or two about this kid. He will be fast. Coming out of 10 Gins football program, Burton has quite a pedigree, and Hazel hopes to be able to use Burton's speed to his advantage. Burton can create havoc in the backfield and drop back into coverage. Mainly, he's used as a linebacker, but also can play defensive end. And he will see that from time to time. Jason hustled back over to the running the point desk. And, of course, once again, it's the three Amigos ready to tuck some defense. Jason, my boy, what do you got? All right, we're back with the final question of running the point. Boys, we've talked offense, now defense. Who's the best defensive recruit? Jason, I'm going to tell you, the best defensive recruit we have come to Kent State right now is Chris Fairchild. He is 6'2", 300 pounds, man. Especially, you know, it's Molly Kitchen. He's leaving this year. He's leaving some ginormous size pants. And Chris Fairchild's going to fill him. Well, you know what? 6'2", 300 pounds, that will attract a double team. But really, the good player is Adam Maxey, defensive back. Six feet, two inches tall, had 137 tackles in his, in his senior year, excuse me, and it was a two-time All-Texas selection, junior and senior year. Plus, check out his highlight film. He's got some nasty interceptions on there. Now, you know what, boys? Do you know who the best defensive recruit is? Who? This guy right here. Watch me running out of the tunnel this fall. <laughs> but for now, Justin Rockhold has a story on what this class means for Coach Hazel and his future. Take a look. He's known throughout the state of Ohio and across the country as one of the best recruiters in the business. Daryl Hazel was known Ladies as a recruiter from the get-go. Football at Kent State, Daryl Hazel. A man with a voice full of hope and aspirations. I know we can win here. I spent a lot of time studying film last week of the offense, the defense, and the, and the kicking game. And we are real close. And there's a few things that we can do to make this thing take off, accelerate. But then the first season came. The offense struggled. The defense played well, but a lot of big plays, and sometimes Hazel was left without answers. Well, it's, it's we just got to find the guys that we have right now. We got to make them better somehow and, and kind of mix some things up. But this offseason, Hazel had a full season to recruit and brought in 25 new players to Kent State. This is why Hazel is here. This will determine his legacy. This class is crucial to turning this program around. Will Coach Hazel's fresh crop of players change Kent State football? Only time will tell. Justin Rockle, TV2 Sports. And in case anybody forgot, this weekend's big PTC matchup between the Ravenna Ravens and the Kent Roosevelt Rough Riders is going down tomorrow night. We'll have everything you need and more when we return with Sports Corner after this break. There's some. Welcome back to Sports Corner, Ravenna and Roosevelt, Ravens, Rough Riders, ridiculous rivalry. Well, that's way too many R's for me to handle, but that's besides the point. Friday night, these two conference foes face off for Route 59 supremacy. But first, both teams played Tuesday night. First off, the Rough Riders took on Streetsboro at home. The Rough Riders were in first place in the conference, but the Rockets were looking to blast off Tuesday night. Let's go to Streetsboro, shall we? Taking it off, that's going to be Richard Graves for the three. He's dangerous back there. Now Let's check out the quarterback, Trayvon Chapman. He can run in football, he can run in basketball, and he can get the layup right there. That's beautiful. Now it's Streetsboro time. This is Brendan, don't call me Brandon Jensi with the steal and the pass. He's gonna get the easy layup. Finished with 15. Streetsboro up 46 to 40. Now it's gonna be Bruce Thomas, the tank engine. 
Whoop, that's a three. Labcat scoring with 11. Back to Streetsboro. Sawyer White hits the three. Streetsboro up 20. Whoo, fourth quarter. He finished with 23 points. Phenomenal. Streetsboro with 71 to 58. But you know what? The big thing is going to be Ravenna. So hopefully that will turn out much better for them this Friday. As you can see, that final score 71 to 58. Tough one for their folks, but the Ravens won. The Rough Riders lost Tuesday night. These teams switch roles, and the Ravens are hoping to keep things alive in their winning ways, while the Riders are hoping they can rough up the birds. We now bring in PortageTrailCentral.com executive in chief, Corey York. Corey, my brother, thank you for joining us here. Corey, give us just a quick breakdown of this matchup tomorrow night for all the high school basketball fans. Well, thanks, Eddie. When it comes to these two schools, you can throw the record books right out the window. Ravenna is flying high right now after back-to-back -back blowout wins against Crestwood and Springfield. Not, not only, now, not the, the Ravens don't need any more motivation earlier this season, but they've already lost once on their home court to Roosevelt. Can't have that happen twice in one season. But yeah. in order to get this one, they must do two, one of two things. They mm -hmm. must win the battle down low in the paint, uh, with Jermaine Justice, their, their leading rebounder by far, the big man has to pull down the boards like you saw in the highlight, Bruce Thomas. He was phenomenal against all of his opponents this year, just bringing in the boards. The second thing they must do is stop Shaquille Howard and Richard Graves on the, on the perimeter. Those two are just dynamite from three, and they have to slow him down. On the Kent side of the ball, the, their, main, their main goal this year will be, or this game, I'm sorry, is going to be defense. Against Streetsboro on Tuesday, they, they just suffered a collapse. Their, their defense was not existent in the second half. They'll have to play a full four quarters of defense if they want to get a win from these feisty Ravens. But it doesn't matter how much preparation you put in this week. It all comes down to the team who wants it most, who's mentally more prepared. It's rivalry week, baby. I'm excited. I hope you are too. I got to be excited. Thank you again, Corey. TV2KSU will be broadcasting game Saturday morning starting at 10 a.m. and we'll be playing it all weekend long. Our wonderful producer, Justin Rockhold, and the eloquent Rich Pierce will be calling the game. Sports Corner will be right back. Welcome back to Sports Corner. In case anyone cares, it's the Super Bowl this weekend, Eddie. Gabe Craner brings us a preview of this weekend's rematch of the 2008 Super Bowl. Gabriel! 16 regular season games and a heart-pumping playoffs. It all comes down to one final battle. Super Bowl 46, the New York Giants and the New England Patriots together once again for a rematch of Super Bowl 42. No, we, we go in there and we, uh, we take care of business. Well, I'm Eddie Kilroy. This is Jason Castora. We got to send it out, folks. Thanks for watching Sports Corner here on TV2KSU. Go Flashes!